what's up everybody welcome back to my channel welcome back to my show the money chat with ovaye this is emmanuel i hope you guys are doing good shout out from miami all right beautiful weather out here i always mention it because it's a reality um, but i'm just happy to be here again on another saturday um and it's exciting and i'm excited of what i am going to be talking about today and if you guys missed my past my previous episodes episodes one and two you can go ahead and um go into my channel go into that playlist on the money chat with ovaya and you can click on it and you know uh, we watch it the first episode is a very important one all right it is called the root of your money habits and I highly recommend that you listen to that one before you even listen to the second one. But do what you please, right? What up, brother Rod? <laughs> I hope you got. I hope you're doing good, bro. Happy Happy Saturday, bro. But um, for those that are listening, I know there's four people on right now. If you can let us know, let me know where you are watching from, what state, what country, what continent <laughs> you know where are you watching from drop it in the comment section so i can highlight and shout you out all right um if i was not in miami i'll be in jersey because that's my that's ultimately my home you know that's where i was right born and raised until i came here four years ago to south florida um so yeah thank you thank you happy saturday bro but yes we're gonna get right into it uh, I'm excited about this this journey that God um, is taking me into. I don't know where else he's going to lead me, but this is a passion, um, a, a topic that I love to talk about. It's a it's a passion of mine. I never thought I would talk about finances and, you know, and stuff like this until maybe last two years ago, all right? But I never thought I would be coming over my own show as well, all right? So before we get started, I want to shout out to Pastor um, Jackson who put me on to this, who reached out to me um, to start this. And he's part of the founder of the Overcomers um, Bootcamp Facebook group page. Uh, you can go ahead and, and follow that page and, and you know see what they got going. And so shout out to him and everybody else and that team as well. And the person doing the flyers for me and whatnot, blessings to you guys. So we are going to get started, but I wanna pray. I want to pray before we get started. So let's just um, pray. Father God, we just thank you for this very moment. I thank you for this beautiful Saturday that you have given us. Thank you for simply allowing us to wake up, for the privilege you're able to hear and see again and taste and walk and, and, and use our hands and able to use our brain, Father God, because there's a lot of people that did not have the privilege to wake up this morning. Um, but I also thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for those that are watching or that will watch later on. Um, I thank you for giving me this, this opportunity to share with everybody uh, when it comes to this topic of finances and how to be financially stable and have better money management uh, uh, skills and all those kind of things. Father, and I just pray for those that watch that are edified and that they can also put in practice um, what I am going to be talking about today. In this very afternoon awesome 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 again welcome to my channel everybody so very quick before i even go into the actual topic um i just want to say that two years ago my wife and i got married and we had sixty seven thousand dollars in debt combined and today we only have like thirty five thousand left to go so we're aiming to be debt free by by december of this year, if not very early on in January. Um, and this is a topic, this is a passion of mine, you know, debts really sucks. You know what I'm saying? Owing money really sucks. And we just got serious. We had a goal, we had a plan and we don't know what, we're gonna attack as much as debt as possible. And for the past two years, I kind of like almost had no life <laughs> because I just been hustling and grinding and, and just doing all what we can to pay off this debt, you know, and we're still young, we still got energy, we ain't had kids, so we're, we're taking advantage now, all right? So let's get in it, guys. So this topic of today on this episode is, um, it's called Solution to Your Unhealthy Money Habits, all right? So we all have unhealthy money habits. If you look at, if you look back at um, my second episode, 
Um, I spoke about healthy and unhealthy spending habit, habits, right? And which is, which is um, unfortunately, you know, many of us have it. Sometimes I still have it in some ways, but it's not like before, you know, I had just serious money habits, bad money habits, bad spending habits. And, you know, it's a struggle and, and money. And, and we have to know where that comes from, which I kind of speak on last episode or in the first episode on the root of your money habits, why you do what you do, why you spend the way you spend, why you why you don't spend at all, why you keep the money or why do you spend too much and, or knowing that you don't have the money and you start using credit cards and whatnot. So the solution, I'm going to talk about some solution to um, your unhealthy habit, all right? And these are all practical stuff that you can take with you. Um, now, the only thing is that you need to be intentional, all right? Because if you just listen to what I say, oh, yeah, that sounds nice. Oh, I got to do it. Or if you get full of emotion but don't do it, then nothing's going to change for you. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's a change of mindset that also goes into a change of behavior. You know what I'm saying? It got to get to your mind, into your heart, and into your outward. All right? So the first thing to your solution, to the solution to your unhealthy money habit is really the Bible. I know some of you probably won't be won't be believers or aren't believers, but let me tell you that the Bible has a solution for everything. Now, what I'm not saying is that we should read the Bible to solve our unhealthy money habits. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what the Bible is for. However, because God cares for you holistically, he cares for your mental state, whether it's emotional, spiritual, physical, you know, um, all, all mental state of your whole life. He cares for you, for you holistically. So I believe that when we have such a broke or a poor mindset, you know, and we go to God in prayer and we read his word and, 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 and it, what he teaches us about money and how to be a good stewardship of your money, you know what I'm saying? God can change that. You know what I'm saying? He can, he can well change your heart. He can change your, your mindset that you've had for such a long time. And let me tell you, I've had it for a long time, even as a believer. You know what I'm saying? But it took people that he put in my life, you know, to help me and to guide me through with all of this. And, then, and, and even with that, it has not been easy because they can't do the work for me, guys. I have to, I'm the one who has to um, do the work. God is not going to do the work for us either, but he'll be the one that's guiding us. He'll be the one that's giving us wisdom. So that is why, and this is, and all, everything I'm telling you is not in order except for this one, again, which is read the Bible. You know, the Bible is words of, has words of eternal life. You know, the, there's, there's so much truth or the whole Bible is full of truth. You know, you can't, there's no errors. There's, it, everything is there for you. You know what I'm saying? God is not just some God who created an earth and he just bounced and then let everybody else live. No, he is a personal God and his name is Jesus Christ. You know, so it's important uh, that you guys uh, read the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Because it is full of truth. Number two, set and write down realistic goals. All right. So I read something yesterday that was so good. And this person said, a lot of people set themselves up for failure because they have a mindset of either indulgence or deprivation. So if you try to deprive yourself too much, where you spend almost nothing, then you end up giving up and you indulge and then you overspend. And then this person goes on to say or continue. So if you have an unrealistic plan, you are probably going to lose control, all right? And then I would add, we cannot be mastered by anything or else we will always give in, right? That is that is deep right there. So we have to set and write down realistic goals. I don't know about you, but I never wrote goals in my life until I got married. I might have had goals in my mind you know what I'm saying? Just to say that I had goals, but I never, I was never intentional in, I was never intentional in accomplishing them. 
I was never intentional in writing it down because when you when you have something in your mind or when you have goals in your mind, you're going to forget them. All right. We all have busy lives. We work. We go to school. We have kids. We're husbands. We're wives. We're sons and daughters. We have so many things. All right. And a lot of people are visual learners. Right. That's what's up. Whiteboard on deck. Right. Um, many people are, are visual learners. But you have to write goals, write them down and make sure that it is realistic. Because if it's not realistic and then you try to accomplish it, you're going to feel like it's super hard. You're going to give up. You know, you're going to even indulge in spending more. All right. Because you just feel horrible. You feel sad. You feel um, maybe depressed. You feel upset. And then because you bought whatever it is that you bought, that made you feel good. So you're going to continue doing the same thing over and over. Like I spoke, I spoke about in my last episode, you know, it's a cycle. You know, we try to, we try to buy things to satisfy our needs. We or not satisfy our need to satisfy our, our um, emptiness that we have in our heart, our sadness. You know what I'm saying? So it is important to write down your goals. Like for example, for me, you know, I, if you go into my, in my other bedroom, you know, I actually have a, a well, right now I don't have it right now, but I have to I have to put it up. But last year and the year before, I had a big poster board um, that my wife created for me. And I had all the months, January all the way to December. Um, and that is um, every month I would write down how much debt I would pay off. That's that's a motive. That's a motivator for me because I can go home every day. And when I go into that room, I'm looking at that board and it's keeping me accountable. It's, let, it's reminding me you know, that don't slack and pay as much as debt that you can and write it on that board. And when you write it, and when I write it, it motivates me more. And I'm able to share this with you guys. I'm able to share this on my social media platform and people are inspired by it. You know what I'm saying? And that's very, very important. Now, obviously you don't have to do it the way I do it. There's different ways of you being created. There's different ways of how you're going to write your goals down. But Writing goals is is important. It's essential for your growth. It's essential for accomplishing goals. For example, last year in August, and you can go back into my um in my in my channel, one of the playlists, talking about my debt free journey. I made a I put a video video out talking about that I will my wife and I will be paying off our car between four to five months. Right now, we had twelve thousand dollars left to pay off the car, and most of you are probably asking, "Dan, you want to pay it off in four to five months? That's a lot of money you're dropping." Now, again, being realistic in our income, you know, and 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 the side hustles that I was doing as well, and getting income from there, we were making sure: can we drop down three thousand dollars a month? or $2,500 a month. Is it realistic to do that? So we can be debt free from one of our cars in four to five months. We, I wrote it down. I made sure that that's how much money I would be, I, I would be getting. I made sure that I would get at least a thousand, I'll make a thousand dollars in, in Uber and Lyft every month. Sometimes I would get more. And I had a hustle that, that kept me, that hold me accountable. And you know, what's crazy. The video itself that I did held me accountable because I said, we're going to do this in four to five months. So I got to make sure that I do it in four or five months. But I also have to realize the reality also that life happens, emergencies happen. If I don't accomplish it, it's not because I couldn't do it. It's not because I was lazy. It was because life happened and it was out of my control. Now, if I was lazy... And I didn't hustle, and I didn't earn that thousand um, dollars for the month aside um, extra. Then that was because of my part. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if you go back to that video, when November came, we made our final payment on our car. Now it was around two thousand or three thousand dollars. So then it wasn't even at the fifth month; it was at the fourth month. So we dropped down. Three thousand dollars from August to November, and we paid off twelve k in just a few months. That is an example of 
writing down your goals. That is, a, that is an example of being realistic with your goals. And listen, I know it's hard. For some of you probably can't do what I did in this sense, maybe because your income is not there, or maybe because you're not married and you don't have a combined income. But at the end of the day, the principle still stands. You know what I'm saying? It may take a little bit longer to pay off your car or to pay off this credit card or to pay off whatever it is that you want to pay off. But the principles still remains the same. If you hustle, if, if you do what you have to do, listen, you're going to get passed by it. You're going to get through it. You know what I'm saying? Now, you're going to need motivation on, on the way in this process. You cannot do this alone. Now, you may be a self-motivator. You know, maybe you, you're able to initiate, you know, um, things on your own and you're just hungry and you're passionate and you're smart and you're, you're wise and you have all the energy and whatnot. But some people may not have that. You know what I'm saying? That exactly, uh, Sister Evangeline. Writing down your goals is very, very important. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you about another one. Um, last year, as we know, COVID, you know, we had the shutdown. We were blessed financially in many ways. We took advantage of it. We were home for three months, my wife and I working. So that means I was not driving 40 minutes to work or 50 minutes to work anymore for three months. So a lot of gas I was saving and I was saving my miles, you know what I'm saying? And, and we weren't spending much on food. We would just go regular grocery shopping, right? Um, we took advantage of the stimulus check that we got. We took advantage of the money that we were getting paid for, and we were paying off debt. We had a goal. to We paid off, I think, four debt in total last year. But but before the car, we paid off my student loan, finally. That student loan that I've had since 2000 and 2009 or 10, and it was only $10,000. And it took me almost 10 years to pay it off, which it could have taken me less than. It could have taken me less than a year if I would have been smart and wise, if I, if I knew the information that I knew now. But of course, I didn't know it. Once we paid off that, that, that student loan, we paid off my credit card, the one that was under my name. And then the month after that, we paid off her credit card. And we had no more credit card. We had no more student loans, at least the one under my name. But the reason why we were able to do that is because we wrote our goals down. You know what I'm saying? We wrote it on a piece of paper, or I wrote it on my phone, I should say, and I looked at it constantly. I'm like, I cannot slack. I gotta make this money. I gotta make. You know what I'm saying? Now, at the end of the day, I wanna, I wanna inform you guys that being debt free is not the end goal for my wife and I. Being debt free shouldn't be the end goal for any of you, for anybody, because once you're debt free, now what? Most people will gonna be is gonna get in debt again to buy a house, which is understandable. And it's unacceptable because not everybody has three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars to put down on the house, even though you will build equity on it. You know what I'm saying? But our end goal is not to be debt free. That's actually a short term goal. You know what I'm saying? Especially knowing that where we're at financially, that we can possibly be debt free in December. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's just how we're thinking about it. That's just based on what the income that we got and what we can put down. But again, Things, life happens, and, and, and we are not in control of certain things that happen, emergency. Who knows? Maybe December won't be the time that we'll be that free. Maybe it'll be next summer, which I hope not. But again, life happens. So make sure that point number two is set goals and make sure that it is realistic. All right? Make sure that it's realistic. Or if not, you're going to get tired and weary, and then you're just going to give up and then just spend money on top of money. All right? Um, number three, number three is you can do different things. All right. This is part of motivation. Join a Facebook group, right? One of the face Facebook groups that I'm in is called the Ramsey baby steps community. And there's like over 5,000 people in that group. And let me tell you, I benefit a lot. I'm not always on it because I have a life, you know, but I'm, but I, I am on it and I go in there and I see the question that people ask a lot of, a lot of people are asking questions of, you know, based on where they're at and financially, or should they do this? Should they, they do that? Or what, what can they do in this situation? And, 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 you know, and the great thing is that a lot of the moderators, I believe in that group. Um, yes. A lot of the moderators in that group is, um, I think they work for Dave Ramsey. 
You know what I'm saying? So that's a good thing. And a lot of people in there have a lot of wisdom and they can tell you, you know, pretty much the wise thing to do in your scenario. And I'm in there. Sometimes I ask questions of myself and you know what? They have helped a lot, you know? Um, so yeah, joining a Facebook group is super important. Um, not just the one that I know, the Ramsey um, Baby Step community. If you know of another group, that's well. You can even join, um, I think one is called the Minimalist the minimalist, minimalist Group, I believe. Um, I am in that group. I haven't been on it for a while, but I am in that group. And because my wife and I, we are kind of minimalist um, in some ways, we don't like to have a lot of things. We like to declutter. We don't like clutter, <laughs> especially me. I hate having too many things, or at least I have to put them in, a, in very neatly. You know, I'm always cleaning and throwing away stuff that I don't really need that doesn't add value to my life, you know, so being be minimalistic and, um, and, uh, um, having, uh, finance, being financially stable can go hand in hand as well. All right. Because sometimes we just spend money on stuff. Do we really need those stuff? And you're adding stuff and putting it in space that does not need to be there. All right. And then you just get overwhelmed. I don't know. Listen, Having too much stuff can overwhelm you. It's just crazy. You can add, you can have so many things in your house, in your closet, in your bedroom, and you can't even move. You have too many clothes, too many shoes. Like, for what? You know what I'm saying? And, and many people don't even wear half of the stuff that they own. You know what I'm saying? It's time to declutter. Not just thing. We got to declutter our mind. We got to declutter. Um, we got to declutter even people, <laughs> toxic people. Right, exactly. Like my wife says, decluttering is so satisfying. Trust me, decluttering is definitely satisfying, and I love it. Um, there's actually a documentary, not a documentary, another a Netflix um series that I like watching. I've seen a few episodes, and it's by a, 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 a Chinese, I think she's Chinese or Japanese, um, lady named Mary Kondo, and she's very, very uh, petite, small. You know, she's very uh, sweet, you know, and, and with the lovely accent that she has. Uh, she don't know much English. And she helps people how to declutter their home. Because, and she just, it's like she's a pro and an expert at that. I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just amazing how that that feels. You know what I'm saying? I ended up decluttering because I had too much stuff, you know? Exactly. You know, so you can do that, you know what I'm saying? That was point number three. Join a Facebook group. Be connected somewhere, somehow. Number four, this is very, another thing that's very important. And number four is find yourself a financial advisor. All right? A lot of people fear that for many different reasons, right? Maybe they don't want their financial advisor to know, you know, their financial, you know, lifestyle. They don't know. They don't want them to know that there's so much in debt. They don't know what to do and what and what not. Uh, Kiana says accountability and community does help with motivation. Amen. Um, for finding a financial advisor, listen, I'm gonna tell you about us. Um, we didn't find a financial advisor. I think it was. I don't know if it was in a in a second year of marriage, or maybe maybe it wasn't a first year of marriage. I don't remember exactly, but it was not right away. Um, we found somebody and. Thank God that person lived close to us, and he sat he sat down with us for two hours for the first time. You know, we did like a whole investigation of everything about our finances, what is our goals, when do we want to be debt free, how much can we put down, doing side hustles, all those kind of things. You know what I'm saying? And listen, it was scary. I, I don't know what if my wife can tell you. But for me, it was scary. You know what I'm saying? Because, and even though we were making pretty good income, but we still had debt. But it was a scary moment. It was a scary feeling, especially when he told us, um, when he told us, listen, if you do this, you can be debt free by this time. Of course, if nothing, nothing crazy happened, that's out of our control. But if you do this, and then if you could pick up a side hustle, you could be that free around this time. And I'm like, wow, and it sounded so good. It, you know, I felt good and, and, and I was happy, but I was scared at the same time because I never done something like this. 
You know what I'm saying? I was never, I never was taught financial literacy from my parents growing up or from anybody. This is just recent for me. And then after a while, you know, he did tell me, why don't you do Uber and Lyft? You know what I'm saying? On the side. So I had to think about everything. First of all, I was in ministry at church at that time. I have a full-time job, nine to five. My wife works as well. She's a teacher. That means I had to pick up a second job. And to me, that was a scary thing. And I had, at the beginning, I was making all excuses. I'm like, damn, then I won't have time. That's right, Rachel. Blessings. Thank you for coming in. Change is scary, but it takes us out of our comfort zone. Exactly. You know, and I was thinking about, man, I'm not going to have time to do this. I'm not going to have time to hang out with my wife as much as I want to. I'm not going to be, as a matter of fact, one of the big things for me, and this is just my honest truth, one of the big things for me is, damn, that means I'm not going to be able to read my books as much as I want to. Because I have a lot of books, if you guys can see, right? <laughs> I have a collection, and I love books. I love to read, you know, outside of the Bible as well, you know? But I'm like, but I have to do it now. You know, we have to sacrifice now. You know what I'm saying? Because I was too comfortable. But then I was talking about thinking about my our future. Like, I want kids. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to have kids and be so stuck in debt. I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to give generously to other people that are in need. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying that I can't give now. But imagine when you're debt-free, you're able to give even more and change people's lives in the financial aspect. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I had to revisit and think about everything that my financial advisor was telling me, you know? So just to give you a little rundown, again, I work nine to five. She works at the school. Monday through Thursdays, I get out of work and I do Uber and Lyft. And I would come home like around 1030, all right? That means I leave early in the morning and I don't come home until 1030, Monday through Thursdays, which means I don't have much time with my wife except for the weekend. But this is something that we agreed upon. You know what I'm saying? We agreed because back then my schedule was all over the place. I did Uber whenever I felt like it. I woke up whenever because we had you really you, you could work on your own schedule. But I'm married now. I can't just go ahead and just leave and do whatever we want. Like we have to communicate. You know, so we had, we created a schedule when I would do Uber and Lyft, you know, and it worked out that way. Um, but there's days I would come home tired and like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm driving, wearing out my car. I have to do maintenance. Like, but the reward is so amazing, guys. <laughs> the reward, because I would get like a thousand dollars every month or more from doing Uber and Lyft on top of our paychecks that we have from our jobs. And I would feel like, man, that's a thousand dollars extra. Yes, I'm hearing a couple of here and there. I gotta do maintenance, oil change, tires, probably whatever. But that's still paid off in, in the long run. And that is why, again, we were able to pay off twelve thousand dollars in four months to pay off one of our cars, which is amazing. As tired as I was, as a matter of fact, I was not always tired. You know what I'm saying? Physically, I wasn't always tired, but it was just more in the mind. I'm like, man, I don't want to do this anymore because I just want to be home, just hang out with my wife and just be free. You know what I'm saying? But I'd rather sacrifice now. You guys, you know, you guys want to be able to sacrifice. Again, everybody have a different situation. We have more of a leeway because we have no kids, you know, and we have more time on our hand, especially me. But, but at the end of the day, even, even if you have kids, even if you have kids, you can make that sacrifice. Just listen to um, a bunch of debt-free debt screams on YouTube from the Dave Ramsey show. And you'll listen to these stories of people who have kids or single mothers who paid off debt all by themselves in less than a certain amount of years. You know what I'm saying? All by themselves. Why? Because they had a goal. They had a vision. They wrote their goals down. Their goals was realistic. And not only that, not only that, they were also um, uh, being motivated by other means as well. Like I mentioned, joining a group, finance, uh, um, finding yourself a financial advisor, right? 
Um, and I, and then, you know what, going back to my financial advisor, we still keep in touch. I, I tell him about updates about what we paid and this and that. He gets very excited. Now, what I want to tell you is that make sure you find somebody who loves to coach, not somebody who just wants to make money off of you. Although there's some people who do that as a living or as a side hustle, which is fine. But find somebody who's really, truly there and who wants to see you succeed. And, and that's how my financial coach um, was doing. He was doing the same thing. And you can feel free to hit me up if you need some guidance. All right? Because listen, we're still in debt right now. But that doesn't mean that I can't help you because we've come a long way. We've come a long way and we are doing it. We're becoming more success at it. Now, I'm trying to find ways where I can be more successful or more, I guess, make more money. And, and you know, I, I need I need your brains, Rachel, and other people. I need more ideas and stuff like that because that's just how it is. I need people around me. I need people who can think like me or I, or I need people who are or who are more successful than me and who, who made it further than me because I want to get there as well. I want to be able to accomplish um, along with my wife. You know what I'm saying? So finding a financial advisor is step is number not step but it's number um, is number four is what I have. So it's very important that you find somebody. Do not shy away from me. And yes, we paid, we paid our financial coach to give us these three sessions that we had. And you know what? In the beginning, you may see you may people may say, "Damn, I don't want to pay over a hundred dollars for that." But then. The fact that we paid that, we well, it wasn't even a lot, but the fact that we paid him to guide us and to sit down with us and to give, him, to give us the plan worked out in the end. Why? Because we were able to pay over almost $38, almost $36,000 um, of debt compared to what we just paid him. You know what I'm saying? So it worked out in the long run. Exactly, Rachel. Uh, smart people surround themselves with smarter people. That's right. That's right. Um, now, let's look at number five. Number five is a crucial one for me. Um, and Rod who um, can tell you because he works. Me and Rod work together. And our job requires a lot of driving. Maybe not so much now because we are at the office um, teaching the students via Zoom. But... Our office is like 40 to 50 minutes away from our home, especially if we leave early in the morning or if we get out at five, it's traffic. So we drive a lot. So I drive a lot and I listen to a lot of um, podcasts. So that's number five. Listen to podcasts. Listen to YouTube, uh, watch YouTube videos on, on this topic on finances, right? One of the podcasts I recommend is the Ramsey Baby Step. I mean, not the Ramsey Baby Step. It's the Ramsey Show. They just changed it. It used to be called the Dave Ramsey Show. Now they change it to the Ramsey Show. All right. If you have iTunes, you can easily um, download it for free. Um, the Ramsey Show, it is amazing. Right. They, I think they upload three episodes, three segments a day on the weekdays, 40 minutes long, 39, 39 minutes long. And it's just nothing but phone calls from people calling in asking for advice. What should they do? What should they do um, when they're in this situation? Should they buy Should they buy the house even though they're in this situation? Should they wait? Should they sell two cars to expensive cars to get a, 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 night, a, a cheaper car but reliable? Like I listen to the podcast every day for years that I already know what Dave Randy is going to say to these, to these people the majority of the time. Like I answer it before he does which helps me out because then I'm gaining wisdom and this is going to help me out in the future for my wife and I, when we come to different decisions and I'm able to help out other people too with decision. All right. Now we're not perfect. Dave Ramsey is not perfect and his team is not perfect, but there is a lot of wisdom in what they say when it comes to finance, right? Whether you like him or not. Right. But at the same time, it is important that you surround yourself with people. It's important that you listen to different podcasts. YouTube oh, and the podcast too, people call in or visit um, Dave Ramsey at the, at ten, in Tennessee where his building is to do the debt-free screen. They share his story. Um, they share 
you know, how they get out of debt, what are their tips on getting out of debt and all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, another podcast that I listen to is called, it's called the, uh, what is it called? The Monday Money Tip. And it's by a guy named Joseph Sango, right? Also great. I have two, I think I have three of his books and he speaks about his journey. I think, I think it's one of his books, his book is called, I was once broke and now I'm not you know, and he can tell you his story, how he was broke, and then now he's debt-free, et cetera, et cetera. You know, blessing, brother, blessing, rise. Um, so, yeah, um, you can listen to that podcast, um, Monday Money Tip as well. Or you can go on YouTube. If, you, if you're if you visual, you want to go listen to, you want to watch Dave Ramsey and his team um, uh, listen, uh, answer questions. Do it too. I do. I I like that more because I get to see their reaction, their faces, and I'm seeing them. And what's more beautiful is looking at their at the debt free screens because you can actually see the people. You can see the tears coming down their eyes. You can see the see the passionate. Like you can see the 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 tears of joy that come out of these families' eyes because of the sacrifice of what they had to go through. Um, in order to pay off debt, in order to be debt free, and it doesn't matter. We're talking about people of all walks of life, people of different careers. You know what I'm saying? Like if they could do it, and they had kids, or their spouse died, and they were on their own, man, I can do it. I can do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, another another podcast or another YouTube channel um, you can listen to. My my wife posted is his and her money. All right, they're actually very good for married couples. All right, um, they great. They give great tips, you know. So I recommend that one too. Um, I, I can recommend a lot of different, you know, shows or whatever. I, I could, if you're on social media, I recommend Jacent Gems as well. I have interviewed her in my channel. You can find her as well. Yeah, so Jacent Gems. I think she has a podcast as well too, where she interviews different people and or she talks about. Um, uh, money as well, and tips and reminders, and me- a lot of mental health as well. You know, so there's other stuff that right now is not coming, not coming to my mind. Um, but those are different things that you could get tuned in. I'm actually interviewing somebody in next month, early next month, and she is a Latina money motivator. She's also in the financial world, and she definitely um, encourages and motivates women, especially women when it comes to finances. And I can't wait. I hope you guys tune in for that one. So that's going to be great as well. All right. So that is um, number five, which is listening to Dave Ramsey, um, you know, different podcasts, you know, YouTube channels and whatnot. Right. Um, Then I mentioned the YouTube videos. And then number seven or number six, number six is read books. All right. In capital letters, <laughs> read books. I know some of us probably or some people don't like to read. They may just like to hear it. All right. You can do that, too. If you're driving, you want to hear the person reading it for you. Hey, by all means, do that. I personally don't do it. It's not my style. I'm not. I get more out of reading the book because I like to highlight. I like to write stuff. You know, I like to uh, screenshot take a picture and then post it. And that's just, I I like it that way. But there are people who like to just listen in their car and whatnot, whatever works for you. But reading does increase your vocabulary, right? Reading, reading expands your brain. You know, it's, it's, it's expand your brain. All right. Um, so reading books is very, very important. So what's your favorite book on money? What book do you recommend for someone starting the debt free journey? Um, one of the books that I, st- I started off with is The Total Money Makeover with Dave Ramsey. You know, that's the first finance finance book that I've ever read. And it changed my whole mindset about so many things, learning about the different the myths and uh, uh, about different things and that people have. You know, there's another um, there's another book. I don't know where it is in my section of finances, but I have it somewhere here. But um but yes, there's other books there. There's another book that I read. I forgot what it's called, 
but it's by a guy named Larry Burkett. I believe he already passed away. Um, I believe he already passed away, Larry Burkett. And as a matter of fact, Dave Ramsey used to love listening to him speak back in the day. You know, um, Paulina, the book that I just mentioned is called The Total Money Makeover. Give me one second, guys. Let me see if I can find it. I have my money section over here somewhere. I just don't remember where I, I placed it. Um, hmm. Money, 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 money. Where you are? Oh, perfect. So, all right. I have a whole list. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you guys. All right. I have a whole section, but we're going to go through this real quick. So, um, this is a... This is this is actually um, this is actually from Dave Ramsey. This is uh, from Financial Peace University. This is actually the handbook of Financial Peace University, the complete guide to money. This is like an updated, I think, version, or this is just new. All right, that is from Dave Ramsey. I have that. Then another good book from from Dave Ramsey is it's called the Money Answer Book. This is really good. The Money Answer Book. All right. Then another one for Dave Ramsey is called More Than Enough. The 10 Keys to Changing Your Financial Destiny. All right. That is that one from Dave Ramsey as well. And then the other guy I told you about, Joseph Sangle. He has three books that I got from him. One of them is called I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. All right. He shares his story about his debt free journey and how he was broke and whatnot. All right. Then his other book is called Oxen, the key to an abundant, to an abundant harvest. You know, that one is pretty good too. I read it and it was really, really interesting. Um, his next book is what everyone should know about money before they enter the real world. That's another good one. And this one, he, he goes, he speaks about, um, let me show you real quick. He speaks about like um, giving, saving, avoiding debt, student loans, credit scores, compound interest, purchasing a home, insurance, you know, relationships, discipline, and other, uh, other tools as well. Then I have two books from Anthony O'Neill, who's also one of Ramsey personalities. Um, he has his own show, the I think it's called Table with with Anthony O'Neill or something like that. Um, but he also has a book called Debt Free Degree: The Step by Step Guide to Getting Your Kid Through College Without Student Loans. I know it seems impossible, but that's a good one as well. And then the other one from him is you know, Destroy Your Student Loan Debt: The Step by Step Plan to Pay Off Your Student Loans Faster. That is um, also by Anthony O'Neill. I think there was one more. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Oh, there it is. I have two more. I have two more. This one is from James Kennedy. He was the founding pastor of, uh, what is it, Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in, no, no, no. Wait, was he the founding pastor? Yeah, he was a founding pastor of the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Fort Lauderdale, um, Florida. And this one's called Freedom from Financial Fear. Freedom from Financial Fear. All right. And then the other one that I told you guys about, yeah, Anthony is dope. Um, the other one I told you about is by Larry Burkett, The Complete Financial Guide for Young Couples, A Lifetime Approach to Spending, Saving, and Investing. So that's another one, but he has another, a few others too that is good when it comes to finances. So those are pretty much all the books that I have on finances um, that you can start off with as well, especially if you're a couple, if you're married or, or you're engaged and whatnot. So there's, you know, there's other good ones as well. Um, oh, I can't forget about this one. And I'm reading this one right now. This is the newest book by Dave Ramsey's daughter called, um, uh, her name is Rachel Cruz. It's called Know yourself, know your money. Discover why you handle money the way you do and what to do about it. So that's her new book. 
It's really good. It goes into the roots of why you have all these money issues. All right, really good. And then, and then I think I have a few more. Uh, I think that's about it. I know I had a few more, but I gave some books away. So, but yeah, yeah, those are the few books that I have on finances. So those are really good book that you guys can uh, um, look into. You feel free to hit me up after this live or whatever. And we can talk about it. And I can tell you the books that I just mentioned. All right. So those are good things. Um, thank you, Evangelines, for for um, posting their names of these authors. Awesome. Kiana says, Rachel Cruz has good content on her YouTube channel, too. The whole Randy Solutions team rock. Yes. Listen. Listen to Rachel Cruz. Listen to Dr. John Deloney, Chris Hogan, Anthony O'Neill. Christy Wright is great when it comes to very, like, strictly entrepreneurship. She's also one of the Ramsey personalities. Um, of course, listen to the Ramsey and whatnot. And exp and be expand as well. Don't just listen to them. Listen to others who give great tips, all right? There was another book that I read a long time ago, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by, Ro by Robert Kiyosaki. That's a great book as well, you know? So those are good things, and that's another tip that you can do, reading books. It will help you, all right? Now, the last thing I will mention, um, and let me know in the chat if you actually do this or not. This is a tip that I don't do. Um, I just, I was never the person to do it. Um, it would probably be great. I don't know, but I know a lot of people love this is uh, Rachel, my husband has that book. Yes, that's awesome. So the last thing I would say is journaling. Let me know in the chat if you journal, all right? Journaling is something I never do. I never done. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just don't do it. But for a lot of people, that helps so much, all right? My wife can tell you she's always journaling. She's always writing like her, her thoughts or journaling ideas and goals and whatnot, you know, that's another practical way that can help you solve some solutions of your money habit. Why? Because as you're journaling, you're having a quiet time. You're at the park. You're in the room listening to chill hop, right, Rod? <laughs> listening to chill hop or any type of music, sipping on some wine and some cheese <laughs> or whatnot. And you're just journaling and you're just writing all your thoughts down. Or you're talking about, you know, you're thinking about your past or um, thinking about where your money, your root of your money problems come from. You know what I'm saying? Those are all, those are, th that's a great practice um, to do. Again, I don't practice that. My wife can tell you that. Other people can tell you that they journal. It helps them. She said, writing helps process thoughts and feelings. And that, that I, I believe that. You know what I'm saying? It does help process your feelings because you're not, instead of always talking and talking and talking, <laughs> instead of talking, talking and talking, you're at least thinking now and you're writing down your thoughts. You know what I'm saying? The closest I've gotten to journaling was like writing a spoken word or some poetry. And that made a difference. Like, wow, like I have all these thoughts and I'm just jotting them down. I don't have to worry about periods, grammar, you know, spelling errors. Like I'm just jotting everything down, what's in my mind. And that can help you. And that's actually, um, it can be very peaceful for you. You know what I'm saying? So that can help you in the long run if you do it consistently, all right? Now, again, this may not be for everybody journaling, but for some people, um, that is a great practice that they can do. And if listen, if you live in Miami with this beautiful weather, there's many places that you can, you can go to in parks that you can just relax or wherever you guys live, you know, find some place that where you can go, go out, you know, take a breather walk around, sit somewhere by a, a picnic area where it's kind of quiet. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know y'all people up north where a lot of snow is out in the cold. Maybe I can't do that right now, but you can still do it. You know what I'm saying? So that's a, a very um, a very important practice to, uh, to do, you know? So with that being said, how do you journal exactly? That's a good question, Paulina. Um, I'm going to answer the best way I know of, unless Kiana can write it quick in the chat <laughs> and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll showcase it so you guys can see what she wrote. 
But when it comes to journaling, you really journal whatever is in your mind. You know what I'm saying? Look, look she said right here. If not journaling, maybe prayer is better. Just talking, talking to God about our situations. He controls our finances anyway. Amen. Amen. Prayer is the number one key to everything. All right. Um, and you know what? You can even journal writing your prayers towards God as well. You know what I'm saying? That's probably something interesting. But when you journal, Paulina, when you're journaling, it's whatever is in your mind. Whatever it is that you're thinking about at the moment, write down your thoughts. You know, write, write how you are feeling. You know, write down what you don't agree, what you agree. Write down what maybe some goals, you know, whatever it is. It can be about anything, really, Paulina. You can write about anything. All right? Um, so that's just pretty much how you journal. Kiana can probably tell you more about it because um, she does it often. So there you, there you go. If you don't have one already, get a journal or a notebook and a nice pen or a pencil and just write. Some people do free writing where you just write what you think and feel straight through. All right. That's what that's that's freelancing. You know what I'm saying? Whatever comes to your mind. There's other people that that has a specific thing that they want to write out, write about, you know, like over here. Others like using journal prompts that ask questions and you answer them in your journal. That's another way too. So, I mean, you can always Google, Paulina too, Google it and find out what are different ways that you can journal. And I'm pretty sure you'll find out some helpful um, articles or, or resources that can help you along their way. Then you got the prayer journal uh, where you write to God what's on your heart. You know, so those are all good practices, you know, to help you when it comes to your solution to your unhealthy money spending habits. All right. So we're almost wrapping up. Feel free to ask any questions in the, in the next within the next um, eight minutes. But um, I just want to say, guys, like, do not be encouraged. I mean, do not be discouraged. All right. Be encouraged. I know life is not easy. I know we're living in some weird and crazy times. Um, in the middle of a pandemic still, while people are losing jobs, people are trying to, people are dependent on the government, people are trying to find ways to create income. Do not lose hope, but we have to have these principles in mind. The worst thing to do is when you have fear, you act, you make decisions based out of fear, and then you make the wrong decision. That's the worst thing to do, especially when it comes to money. You don't want to make um, serious, um, uh, uh, what is it? Serious actions or serious decisions with money when you do it out of fear, or when you feel, or when you do it out of feeling desperate. You know that's super important that you do not do that. Find somebody to talk to. Find an account accountability partner. You know, I have a few accountability partners. I have my wife. Um, I have. Um, my my poster boards, whatever, that's my accountability. Budgeting, you know what I'm saying? That's my accountability as well. I have YouTube videos. I have friends, you know, that hold me accountable, that we have conversations and talk about different things. Even making videos like this holds me accountable because not only that I'm telling you what you guys should do, I have to make sure that I'm saying I'm doing what I have, what I tell you as well. I may not be perfect at it. I may, I may stumble here and there, but that doesn't mean that I have to stay down there. I just gotta pick myself up and continue moving forward, no matter the no matter what the issue is. You know what I'm saying? So, does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any thoughts? Any um any concerns? You know, any prayer requests? Um, feel free to put it down right now in the la in the next six minutes that we have left. Um, but I think I hope that I provided you some great tactics and great practical tips of how to um, attack your unhealthy money habits. Um, again, read your Bible, be in prayer with God. You know, he has a solution to all of this. He has a solution to every human problem, which is a human heart, all right? We lack, we slack, we have emotional issues. You know, we have so many type of issues in our lives that only God can cure us from it. Only God can lead us into the right direction and leads unto the truth, which is Jesus Christ. You know, and he does it through his spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. 
you know, we are not meant to do this alone. We are not meant to walk this path alone. All right, we are not our own island. Find somebody that you can confide in. Find somebody that you can trust. Um, Paulina, I don't have, I don't have any money to spend because I'm young. But now I know what to do when I have money. All right, that's awesome. You know, um, maybe I don't know if you have family members, your parents, or whatnot. They can, you can ask them. You can buy a journal. Trust me, journal journals are not expensive at all they you can get them so cheap as a matter of fact you don't even have to get an actual like pretty journal you can just buy a notebook you know go to family dollars or dollar tree around if you have one around you and you can get a, a little do one of those old school black and white notebooks for like a dollar and just use that um paulina you know but i know you can do it and when you get that notebook or that journal just write your thoughts down you know you're not alone in this trust me I come along, I'm 34 years old. Um, I came a long way, right? The knowledge and wisdom and information and resources that I have now, I didn't have this when I was your age, Paulina. So whatever age you are right now, you're great, you are getting great information because, and you should be privileged and thankful for that because again, I did not, received this information when I was young. My parents didn't talk to me about finances. You know, I didn't have friends that that talked about finances when I was young. I didn't have friends. So you're 15 years old, you know. Um, so that's awesome. You know, but in the meantime, pray to God. Share all what's in your heart and, and, and let it all out to God. You know, but also seek other people, seek YouTube channels that you can look and watch into to gain some uh, uh, wisdom as you go. Because listen, when you are of age to work and have and gain income, you're gonna enter the real world, all right? Because whether somebody wants to become a, who wants to become, a, I don't know, a financial coach or work in the financial world or not, you're gonna have to deal with money regardless. You know what I'm saying? Because you cannot live life literally without money. What I mean is that you cannot buy food, you cannot get food, clothes, get a house, get an apartment, travel, get a car without money. Whether it's a credit card, whether it's cash, debit card, whatever the case may be, every day in our lives until we die, money is always gonna be around, all right? And we, and we need to at least know the principles of money, all right? We're gonna need to know how to handle, how to budget, how to save, or how much we should save, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, so I'm gonna wrap up now, but before I wrap up, please make sure you like this video. Please sure, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Uh, make sure you share whoever you think that needs this information that can benefit from this. Um, and the last thing is, Next, not next Saturday, because I'm gonna do my, I'm gonna do this show every two weeks. So the following Saturday, in two weeks from now, my wife and I will be doing um, episode number four together. All right, and we're gonna be talking about budgeting and how we did it as a couple. We're gonna talk about the 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 communication, the lack of communication that we had a few times. How do we get better? you know, what do we agree on, you know, and different tips that we can talk about. So stay tuned for two weeks from now, um, as we, my wife and I will be doing this episode number four together. Make sure you let other people know. And <laughs> my wife says we are, <laughs> she's funny. But, um, but yes, thank you guys for coming in. Um, and I hope you guys have a blessed Saturday and enjoy your Sunday tomorrow and enjoy the rest of the day. And happy Valentine's Day for everybody who's probably going to be celebrating. Um, but enjoy, guys. Love you guys so much. Be encouraged and trust in Christ alone, not in man. Peace. <laughs>